Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be talking about the probability of an event happening at least once. So at least once means it could happen more than once, but just at least one time. So the probability of something happening at least once is going to be 1 minus the probability that it does not occur at all. Now, the probability that it does not occur at all is usually a lot easier to calculate. So we just calculate that, subtract it from 1, and that gives us the probability of it happening at least once. Alright, so let's look at this first example. Find the probability of having at least one boy when you have three children. So the probability of at least one boy. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at the probability, sorry, 1 minus the probability of having no boys. All right, which is the same thing as saying the probability of all girls. So in order to find this, we need to first take a look at the probability of all girls, which in this case, since we're talking about three children, it's the probability of having three girls. So the probability of uh, the first child being a girl would be one out of two times the probability of the second child being a girl would also be one out of two and the probability of the third child being a girl would also be one out of two. Alright, so this is child one, child two, child three. So we multiply those together and we get one out of eight, or approximate, or not approximately in this case, exactly, 0.125. So it's going to be one minus, we now have the probability of having all girls is going to be 0.125. So we get 0.875. That's the probability of having at least one boy. For example two, when you roll a die four times, what is the probability of rolling at least one six? So we want the probability of at least one six. So we're going to take 1 minus the probability of no 6. Alright, so let's take a look at this part. The probability of no 6s. So we're rolling a die 4 times. On the first roll, what's the probability that it's not a 6? Well, it could be a 1 through a 5. So there's five different possibilities out of the six total. For roll two, it's going to be the same thing, five out of six. Roll three, same thing. And roll four, same thing. When you just multiply all of these together, you would get 625 over 1,296, which is approximately 0.48. So we're going to take that back over here. So we get 1 minus the probability of no 6 we figured out was 0.48.
So we subtract that and we get 0.52. That's the probability of having at least one six. All right, number three. Each year, the probability of a major storm hitting Houston is one out of 15. For each of the following, write your answer in decimal form to the nearest thousandth. So for this class, by default, we're just going to be talking about to the nearest hundredth. That's if nothing is said. But in this case, since it says round it to the nearest thousandth, we have to make sure to do that. So for part A, find the probability that a major storm hits Houston two years in a row. All right, so we have year one and year two. So for the first year, we know that the probability of a major storm hitting is 1 out of 15. For year 2, it would still be 1 out of 15, and we just multiply those because we want both to happen. So if we multiply those out, we're going to get 1 over 225 or approximately 0.004 when we round it to the nearest thousandth. For B, find the probability that no major storm hits Houston for four years. So this time we're gonna have four years If the probability that a major storm does hit Houston is 1 out of 15, then 1 minus 1 out of 15 would be 14 out of 15. Because the other 14 times, nothing hits Houston. So for year 1, it would be 14 out of 15. Same with year 2, year 3 and year four. And again, since we want all of these to happen, we're gonna be multiplying these together. So if we multiply these together, now we're getting into some bigger numbers. This is gonna be 38,416 over 50,625 or approximately 0.759 and that would be our answer. All right, for part C, at least one major storm hits Houston during a four year period. So we see that this one says at least. So since it says at least, we want to know the probability of at least one. So to get that, we could do one minus the probability of none in four years. So for the probability of no storm hitting Houston for four years, that's actually what we did in part B. No major storm hits Houston for four years. So we actually already have that information, so we can just plug it in. We get one minus probability of none was 0.759. And if we subtract that, we're going to get 0.2 for one and that would be our answer all right number four when you purchase a lottery ticket in the state the probability of winning is sorry the probability of winning two dollars is one out of ten what is the probability of having at least one $2 winning ticket when you buy five tickets? 
All right, so we see at least again. So we're looking for the probability of at least one winner. So to get that, we can do one minus the probability that none win. So we need to figure that out first. The probability that none win. So we're buying five tickets. If one out of every 10 wins, then that means nine out of every 10 are going to lose. So the probability that none win out of five tickets would be nine out of 10. That's the probability for the first ticket times nine out of 10 times nine out of 10. And we keep going five times. So that's tickets one through five. Each of them have a nine out of 10 chance to win. Or sorry, a chance to not win. So if we multiply all these together, again, continuing our theme of some big numbers, we would get 59,049 over 100,000, or approximately 0.59. So we can take that back over here now. One minus the probability that none win was our 0.59, which means when we subtract it from one, we get 0.41. And that would be our answer. All right, so that was at least, now these last three are just gonna be a little bit of a review of just some basic probability again, just some extra examples. So number five, what's the probability of rolling two ones, or snake eyes is what it's called, when you roll two dice? So for die one and die two. Probability of rolling a one on the first die would be one out of six, so there's six sides on the die. Probability of rolling a one on the second die would be the exact same thing, still one out of six. So there's still six sides, still only one of them has that one on it. And then we just multiply them together because we want them both to happen. So that's gonna be one out of 36 or approximately 0 0.03. Number six, if Stan and Jennifer have four children, what is the probability they will have four girls? All right, so we're looking at four children. So child one, child two, child three, and child four. So for the first child, what's the probability that's going to be a girl? Well, that would just be one out of two. So it can either be a boy or a girl. We want the girl in this case, so it's going to be one out of two. For child two, it would still be one out of two. Child three, child four, all going to be one out of two. And since we want all of those to happen, we're gonna multiply them all together. So that's gonna end up giving us one out of 16, which is approximately 0 0.06. All right, last one. A bag of M&Ms contain eight red and 12 blue M&Ms. If three M&Ms are randomly chosen, 
what is the probability of choosing all red? All right, so for this one, let's just call this M1, M2, M3 for our three different M&Ms that we're trying to draw. All right, so we want them all to be red. So for the first one, what is the probability that it's gonna be red? Well, we know that there's eight red and 12 blue, all right? Which means that there's 20 total. So the eight red that we want out of 20 total. That would be the probability for the first one. Now here's the thing, since we randomly chose one, we took it out of the bag, which means there's no longer eight red ones in there. There's now seven red ones in there. And that means also that our total is no longer 20, it's gonna be 19, because we removed one of them. All right. So for our second M&M, &M, we're going to do the same thing, but using our new numbers. So we know that there's seven red ones now over how many total? Well, there's 19 total now. And that would be our second draw. Now again, we took one out. So now there's six red ones. And there's 18 total M&Ms left. So for our last draw, six red ones we could choose from out of 18 total. And since we want all three of these to happen, we're gonna be multiplying these together. And if we do that, we're gonna have 336 over 6,840 which is approximately 0 0.05, and that would be our answer.